Welcome back guys and hello if you are new. So I hope all of you have had a really great week. Um, obviously we're about to go into Halloween so I hope you guys have got some really great Halloween plans. But as it is Halloween it's near the end of the month so I thought I would record my October monthly favourites. So if you're not aware of how I kind of do this I usually highlight one particular band as my feature favourite and I kind of talk about them probably the most. And then there are other albums as well that are all just as fantastic and highly recommended. So with that in mind, I thought we would start off with Molasses and their brand new album, Through the Hollow. So Molasses are a band that were essentially commissioned for this festival called Roadburn. Now if you don't know Roadburn, it's uh, a festival in Tilburg in the Netherlands and a lot of the stuff that they have there is often commissioned just for Roadburn, so it's like a one-off kind of thing. And basically Molasses is The Devil's Blood, which were a band uh, which disbanded in 2013 and then the singer of that band, Selim Lemucci, sadly committed suicide about a year afterwards. And basically what's ended up happening is they've decided to release their own material. So Through the Hollow is the first example of that. Um, and it is an absolutely fantastic album. The album is dark, emotive and incredibly introspective. And for me kind of sits in that sort of realm of Aransi Pazuzu, you know, the very sort of ethereal, uh, but very progressive sound. And there's no sort of real screaming or anything like that. The vocals are very sort of soft, but it has a real sense of psychedelia behind it and definitely prog rock. But it's definitely one that almost kind of went under my radar, but I cannot recommend this album enough. Season of Mist have released this record and it's just absolutely brilliant. It's definitely creeping into my album of the year list, I've got to say. It takes you to Next up is my second choice, which is Greg Puciato and Child Soldier, Creator of God. So if you're not familiar with Greg Puciato, he is the singer from the Dillinger Escape Plan. He's also in Killer Be Killed and previously has put together a kind of electronica dance synthwave project that was the Black Queen. Now, this is his first ever solo album and I think it's amazing the fact that Everything on this record, apart from the drums, has been played by Greg. And I think that Child Soldier is potentially his most widespread vocabulary to date. You know, there are songs which have acoustic elements in there. There's industrial elements, classic sort of Dillinger escape plan sound, I guess you could say. But there's always this sense of melody that he's had. But the great thing about this record is that it basically goes wherever it wants and that's what I think is great is that Greg has allowed that sort of freedom and the creative reach that he can have because he, he's just releasing it for himself. This is everything you might expect from the frontman and then a little bit more which is one of the reasons why it's so high on my recommended list. So Despicable is not an album, unfortunately, but it'll definitely tie us all over until whenever they might release an album. So it's four tracks long and it's very much not repeating what they've done. And I think that's the best thing about Carcass is that they never retread old ground. You know, Heartwork was Heartwork, Surgical Steel wasn't Heartwork 2.0 and neither is this EP. There are some really interesting songs on here. I think that the melodies are obviously signature as part of Carcass's melodic death metal style. Rhythms and tempos and things like that change up a little bit more, which I thought was really cool um, and definitely had me kind of coming back for a little bit more. There's the signature snarl of Jeff Walker and that, you know, fantastic melody that Bill Steer has. And it is exactly what you would come to expect from Carcass, but it acts as kind of like a comfort blanket, if anything, and just makes me even more excited to hear where they're gonna go in their next album. Yeah. 
Next up is Coastlands and their album Death. So Coastlands are an instrumental uh, post-rock, post-metal band and the idea behind the album is all the iterations of death, what death is and you know how it can kind of be explored which can be quite difficult if you're an instrumental uh, post-metal band but what's drawn me to this album is just the fantastic sense of melody and also that sort of sense of story and that's created in the fact that there are sort of, you know, motifs which come back from the beginning, the middle and the end. And then they do kind of piece together this songwriting. And I don't know why, but I just seem to really, really vibe with instrumental post-metal. Like, I'm a huge Russian Circles fan. And Coastlands, I think, are doing something very, very different. The album was also uh, mixed by... Kurt Ballou and then mastered by Magnus Lindberg of Cult of Luna. So two very big names and the two kind of, you know, positives of that is that the album just sounds brilliant. And particularly when you've got an instrumental band, you want everything to sound as great as it can. Coastlands is a fantastic band and definitely not one to miss out on on death. Icelandic black metal is perhaps some of my favourite uh, style of black metal and truth be told there's not a huge amount of sort of exploration that's going on here but it is black metal done incredibly well and this band first sort of caught my attention on their self-titled release um, and ever since then I've been kind of going back to them ever so slightly but I feel that this album is you know another logical step forward like I said it's not kind of anything too crazy or too out there but if you really like your black metal then chances are you won't be able to go wrong with this Now, next is a band that compromised for absolutely no one. Anal Nathrak return with Indarkenment. And this album, as you can imagine, does feature the industrial crazy extreme metal and our signature extreme Pavarotti <laughs> that is Dave Hunt. But what I like about this album is that it's very much a theoretical, philosophical idea um, of this kind of like the reverse of the Enlightenment. So that's what they mean by Endarkenment. And one of the reasons they've got that striking artwork with a pig with cocks in its eyes, as Dave Hunt said, is that it's meant to be a reflection of what humanity is at the moment. You know, we're so blind to where we are in our actual society because of all of these useless, you know, not really meaningful things that we're so attached to. I think the melodies and the choruses on this album are really, really great and showcase just how, despite them being incredibly extreme, they are also very versatile as a band. I come to my next band, which is Nuclear Power Trio, and that is Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un all coming together for some instrumental fusion prog metal thrash craziness. It's a really, really great little EP. Uh, the, the real identity of each player will remain highly confidential, um, but I'm sure that if you look close enough, you can find out um, each player because they have a lot of their own kind of characteristics and their own ideas um, on this album. But there's a really, really great couple of songs on here. It's funny, it's tongue in cheek, you know, like the doing a lot of satire, particularly at the moment, as we're nearing that, you know, fateful election day. But most importantly, the album just is really, really good. Um, there's some amazing slap bass coming from Vladimir Putin, and then Donny absolutely holds down the fort on the guitars. There's some really interesting flamenco passages as well. The band are instrumental, but, you know, there, there are sort of elements of flashiness and you know this fantastic virtuoso playing but it never gets boring so I'm very excited to see what we get from the next installment of the nuclear power trio <laughs> Now, 
Next up is Inferi with their EP of Sunless Realms. So this band kind of first came onto my radar on that uh, previous album, the one with the guy fighting the blue sort of um, monster. And of Sunless Realms is again, you know, the band kind of moving forward. It's hyper technical, very, very technical, especially on guitar. But that's kind of what kind of led me to them. Um, I think it's more melodic than they have done before, but there's also a hint of kind of symphonic elements as well. Um, but very, very strong guitar playing, very strong technical abilities, like across the board, to be fair. And one that I have found myself coming back to more and more and more, uh, and definitely deserves your attention. And finally, I come to Benediction's new album and Scriptures. So Scriptures is the first album to feature the band's longtime vocalist. Um, Benediction are a band that have been around for absolutely years. And truth be told, I've never really gotten into them. Like I've never properly, you know, dived in. So this was kind of like my first proper exposure to them. And I think this album's really good. I was pleasantly surprised, I've got to say. And there's a lot of groove. It's solid death metal all the way through, but what they do, they do very, very well. Um, and it's weirdly been one that I've been playing quite a lot. Uh, and I think it's just a, a really good example of good death metal done well. You know, there's groovy sections, there's sections where it kind of makes you want to move a little bit more, and it, it's really cool. So those are my favourites for October. Please do let me know if you have any others or any other recommendations. But apart from that, be safe, be kind, and I'll see you guys next month for my November favourites. Take care, my friends.